Greetings from the Appalachian Christian Center, Peterstown, West Virginia. I am Pastor Michael Biggs. Good to be back with you again today. Uh, unfortunately, this morning we did have to uh, cancel services at the church. Uh, we had somewhere between four and five inches of snow and made it a little hazardous to get out, so we felt like it was better to cancel services instead of trying to uh, have services and maybe someone be involved in an accident or or something and uh, we always hate to cancel church but sometimes we just feel like it's safer for everyone uh, if we do that but I would like to read a few scriptures out of the book of first Kings uh, today chapter 18 verses 20 through 24 uh, it's the story of Elijah on the uh, Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal starting in verse 20 so Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. And if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. And then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls, and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bull, and lay it on the wood, <clears throat> put no fire under it. Then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the, answer, all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. You know, do you have the courage to take a stand? Here in the story, we see Elijah standing against 450 prophets of Baal, plus all the other children of Israel, uh, the people uh, gathered around watching. But he was willing to stand faithfully, courageously on what he believed. Now, you, you think about that. Uh, that, that's, you know, acting out in faith. And that's what God calls us to do. Uh, but Elijah, you know, he tells him that what we're going to do is we're going to prepare a sacrifice and offer it to God, whoever God is. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to fix everything properly as you would prepare a sacrifice, except we're not going to put fire. We're not going to light the, the altar on fire and have it consume the sacrifice. What we're going to do is we're going to trust God to send fire from heaven. Now that was that's taking a, a stand and that's being courageous in what he believed. You know, the time in which Elijah lived was one of the darkest and most evil times in the history of Israel. When when God is abandoned, when God is left out of our lives, <clears throat> there is a moral breakdown in society. Morality can't exist and will not exist without spirituality. Morally, or morality, can exist without a relationship with the true and the living God. We just are not moral creatures without God's presence in our lives. This is what had happened in Israel. They, they had forgotten God, or they had pushed God uh, uh, to the back burner. They placed Him out of their lives. It, it's not as if they didn't believe in God anymore. They had just you know, moved him from first place in their life. They had uh, uh, placed other gods to an equal standing with God uh, as they had become uh, engaged or entangled uh, in, in this open idolatry uh, of worshiping Baal. And is that not what is happening in America today? We've placed God on the back burner and we begin to worship other gods. Now, the gods that man worships today may not be a, an image or a false god like Baal or some of the other gods that some of these pagan uh, nations worshipped in, in the Bible, but man is still worshipping a false god. The false gods today that we're worshipping, uh, uh, is, one is money. Uh, man will do anything for a buck. Uh, we'll cheat our neighbor. We'll uh, steal from our family. We'll do whatever it takes to, to make a little money. We, we, we strive to gain power uh, or, or fame. All these things become gods in our life. And I think the biggest God that man serves today is a God called self. We're more concerned about ourself 
than anything else in this world today, more than God himself, more than our neighbor, more than the people around us. <clears throat> we we want to make sure that we get ahead, that, that we gain, that we have, and we're not concerned about other people. These gods are no different than the gods <clears throat> that Israel was worshiping. They, just like these people, had become more important in the lives than Jehovah, Yahweh, the great I am more important than God. And we must be careful not to allow these things to take the place of God in our lives. Just like Elijah, we must take a stand in this world today. Elijah said, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but the Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now, uh, Elijah wasn't the only prophet left. God had, did have other prophets left. In the, but, you know, as Elijah stood there on Mount, Car Mount Carmel, he was the only prophet that was there that day. A and there was 450 prophets of Baal. And, and sometimes when we take that stand against for, for God against the world, we'll feel like we're standing alone. A and sometimes there may not be anyone there you know, with us, it's willing to, to support us and be with us. But there, there is always someone there. They, they may not be willing to stand up. They may not have the courage to speak out. But we must be willing to stand up for God. We look around and we see uh, America has seemingly turned their backs on God. We see corruption in our politics. We see an increase in laws or political actions that are against the will of God. We're, things that are being pushed upon us are, are the gay rights, the LGBTQ, uh, abortion, the, the murdering of, of unborn babies, this thing of, of abortion on demand. We see the removal of the Ten Commandments and other Christian items from schools and public places. They don't want to see nativity scenes uh, placed at, at Christmas time on public grounds. And, and the list goes on. We're told that we must be politically correct. We see our world becoming more of what it was like in Elijah's time. And we must, just like Elijah, we must be willing to take a stand. <clears throat> Here Elijah takes a stand. And against 450 of these prophets, he says, let them bring two bulls and we're going to place them on the altar and we're going to prepare the altar. We're going to do everything it takes to offer a sacrifice to God, except we're not going to light the wood. We're not going to put any fire. And then what we do is we'll pray. We'll each pray to our God. Y'all pray to Baal. I'll pray to, to the Lord. And whoever sends fire, we're going to declare that he is God. Uh, the people agreed. They, they, they said, let it be. Now, this was not an easy task for Elijah. Uh, uh, Elijah's standing alone against 450. And, and he's, he's, he's stating, you know, we're going to believe that a miracle is going to occur. Can you believe God for a miracle? You know, I, I thought about as I was preparing the message, I thought about the, those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they stood before the king. Uh, the, the king was telling the boys, y'all got to bow down. You got to worship this uh, image that I've made. And, and if you can't do that, I'm going to have to cast you into the fire. You know, think about those three Hebrew boys. Now, these are, these are not old men. They're not seasoned men. They're not veterans. These are young boys, probably teenagers. They're standing there before the king, Nebuchadnezzar. They're standing there before a fire that, that's roaring hot. They're standing there looking at the statue that the king has said, whenever you hear the sound of music, you bow down and worship it. And I'm sure that that fire is playing on their minds. You know, that fire is hot. That fire can consume us in a moment. Everybody else is bowing down. You know, we, we use that for an excuse a whole lot. Everybody else is doing it. But they stood firm. They had the courage to take a stand. And it, take, it takes courage to stand. But we need to always remember, when we take the courage, when we find the courage within us to take that stand for God, victory will always follow. The prophets of Baal, they prepared their altar. They got the wood. They, 
They took their sacrifice, they cut it into pieces, they laid it on the altar, and then they began to pray. And they prayed. And they prayed. And they prayed some more. But the problem was fire never failed. They began to cut themselves. You see, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So they were trying to shed their own blood, thinking that the shedding of their blood was going to bring something about from God. But they got no answer. No fire from heaven failed because Baal was not a real God. He was a false God, something they had simply made up, a, a God in their own minds. Elijah makes fun of them, tells them to cry louder. Maybe God's on vacation. Maybe he's taking a nap. Maybe he's doing something else. Maybe he's busy. Finally, Elijah prepared his altar. You know, we, we have to realize and we have to understand this, that when we work for God, when we do things for God, there is always a proper time. Elijah allowed the prophets of Baal to go first, and he gave them time. They prayed. I don't know if they started praying in the morning, and but it said they went prayed through the noon hour. And then when it came the time for the evening offering, the evening sacrifice, that's when Elijah prepared his altar at the time. That's when we must act at the right time. It, it was then that uh, Elijah the prophet, it, it, it said that he came near and he said, listen to what Elijah prayed. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. And I'm your servant and that I've done all these things at your word. What Elijah's prayer was, was simply this. Let it be known that you're God. Show them that you are the true and the living God. And then the last thing he said was there, that I've done all these things according to your word. We must always act on God's word. According to what thus saith the Lord. And the Bible says when he finished praying that then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. You see, when Elijah took a stand, victory came. Now, it takes courage. It's not always easy. But we must take a stand for God in this world. We, we look around and we see so many people who have, have turned their back on God. Uh, our society seems like it wants to push God out of the way. We don't want God around. We don't want God's way. But you and I, as God's children, we must be willing to take that stand and understand this. It takes courage. It's not an easy thing to stand up. It wasn't easy for uh, Elijah to stand against these 450 prophets of Baal. It wasn't easy for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to stand before the king that day with the fire roaring. It wasn't easy for Daniel that day to stand uh, and, and actually he knelt and prayed when he knew that prayer was going to place him in a lion's den. And, and we could look at other stories. You know, think about Joseph. It, it took courage for Joseph to always do the right thing, no matter when he was cast into a pit or cast into servanthood or cast into prison. He always did the right thing. He took a stand for God. And every time in God's word, he shows where men and women take a stand for God, victory always follows. I pray that you will take a stand. You'll take a stand against the odds and wait for the victory to come. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, and for your many blessings. And Father, we do realize that we're living in the last days. We're living in those days that you said would become worse and worse. Father, we realize that, Father, the, the times uh, have, have certainly changed. They're, they're not times when our nation seems to be following you. But, Father, we pray that you'll help each one of us that hear your voice today and, Father, call ourselves Christians to take a stand 
for you, to take a stand for your word and, and to live according to thus saith the Lord, no matter what the world does and no matter how the world may turn against us, may we take that stand for you, knowing, Father, that when we do that, victory will follow. Father, we do lift up the many needs in our church, in our community. Father, you know each one of the needs that's represented. And Father, we just place each one in your hand and pray that you move in a mighty way. Touch hearts and lives, Father God, as only you can do. Heal those that are sick in body. Touch and strengthen and uh, those that are discouraged. And uh, Father, encourage them. Bring peace to those that need peace. And Father, as always, we'll give you the praise and glory and honor for everything said and done and all that's accomplished. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And we do pray that you have a great day and God bless.